all right hey what's going on how you feeling out there just giving you a video on how you can actually do your finances in excel basically we're looking at compound interest annuity loan payment and finding time so i'll give you those four topics in excel and show you a pretty simple way to do this stuff all right so if you're in excel make sure of course that your excel is the latest version so i'm thinking it might be a 2018 2019 version of excel uh so this is the pc version just in case if you know if nobody caught on so it's definitely the pc version uh of excel uh, but you can do this in mac as well um it's some of the same things you can do i think just one or a couple of slight differences but you are able to do this in mac as well but in pc this is what this is you go into excel your latest version all right, you want to start off by going into formulas. All right, because notice we're going to actually check this out for compound interest. So I'm going to show you how you get there. So when it comes to compound interest, again, you're looking to see and you want to find out what your future value is. All right, so let's click on financial. Uh, once you get into formulas, all right, so you click on again the formulas tab, go into financial, and you'll see all of these financial functions here. So we're talking about accrued interest, all right? We're talking about uh, future value. Uh, we're also talking about uh, number of periods here, payment, the durations. Oh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a few of these things here. But of course, we're going to look at future value, both for compound interest and annuity. We're going to look at payment for your loan payment and to find time, we're going to look at P duration. So those are the ones that we're going to stick with for right now. All right, so let's go and check out the future value. Okay, so going back to what we have here, we basically have a compound interest part here, and I'll turn this into some money so that way it looks a little bit better. All right, so in compound interest, we see that we're starting off with a principal of 35.29 at a rate of 5.81% uh, for 17 years and compound it three times a year. All right, so three times a year. So when it's all said and done, and of course this is done by hand, you should end up with 93.86.50. That's what you should end up with. And this again, done by hand. Let's see what Excel does. So again, you go to your formulas, formulas tab, financial, future value. So really, we can either type this stuff in or just click on the cells of where they are. So I'm actually going to be a little bit lazy and just click on some of this stuff. So you see why I have a rate of 5.81%. So I'm going to start by clicking that because it did ask for the rate. And you can see in Excel, it already converts it into a decimal for you. You do not have to type it in. So once you type in exactly how you see your interest rate, whatever the percentage is, Type it in as is, or if you have it in a cell somewhere, just click that window or that cell, and there you go. It actually converts into a decimal for you. And since it is being compounded three times, and you can look down here, just in case if you forget, the rate, as it says, is the interest rate per period. For example, use 6% divided by four for quarterly payments. All right, so in this case, we're looking at, well, payments every three times. All right, or periods every three times, so three times a year. All right, so we're going to divide this by three. And as you can see, it does the math for you. All right, so we have that. Number of periods. Well, the number of periods, again, we can simply type this in. Of course, it's going to be three times 17. Or again, you can just simply click it. So again, this is N times T. So if you remember that compound interest formula, all right, I'll put that in another video for you just for reference. All right, so all you're doing is you're just simply saying N times T, and there it is. It should give you 51. Exactly. Here you have payment, but here's the thing. You're not paying anything in there. You already have that principal, which you just put straight in there, so you hit zero for that. But your present value, however, is this amount. So I have this 3529. So again, you can type this in or simply click the cell and you see what popped up. 
you see what popped up. And a lot of times I like to put a negative in there because it kind of says you are paying into it. But in this case, this is money that you'll be getting back in return as your future value. As you can see, the final value came out to what it should have been. 9386.49575. But of course, that's just round up to the nearest cent because it is money. There you have it. That is compound interest done in Excel. It does it for you. So again, if you know what the formula is, and I'll put this in another video so that way you have a reference. Okay. So you use this. Again, this was done by hand. Excel just knocks it out in seconds. And that's what it should be based off of the, of the principle, the rate, the time, and how many times it's compounded per year. There you are. All right. Next in row is annuity. So again, you're paying into this thing for, you know, $430. All right. And you're doing this once a year. You're doing this once a year. All right. Because it is, you know, compounded once a year. So that's your payment uh, or period. I'm sorry. So you have 430 paying this once a year at 7% interest. Again, compounded once. All right. And you're doing this for 15 years. You do it by hand. And again, I will give you that formula in, in another video. By hand, you should get 10805 48. Now, how does one do this in Excel? Again, if you recall what I said before, again, annuity is like a, well, basically like your future value. So you click future value again, and you do the same exact things you did before. So you had a rate of this, all right, which is 0 0.07. And I mean, we can leave it like that because it is simply being divided by one. But if you want to put it in there as well, that helps you out, do it. It does not change it at all. All right. So periods we have N times T, right? 15. Now we can go into our payment. And here we have it. $430. And look what popped up. All right. So again, I'll make that negative. So that way it looks a little bit better. So again, you're paying in. It's not saying that you're losing money. It's just saying that you're paying into an account. And that's basically what an annuity is. It's like a future you know, account. That's basically what it is. Um, some retirement accounts are are that annuities. So here you are. Just like we did it by hand, you come up with 10805.48. Again, in Excel. You just type these in or you can click the cell. And again, you go to financial, future value. And you can do this. You type in everything that was there or again, click the cell and you see what happens. There you are. Annuity. All right. So here we have a monthly payment. All right. Of you bought a store. All right. For 725000 And the buyer made a 10% down payment of the store. It was financed at 3 point. I'm sorry. 6.35%. All right. For this loan for 27 years. Here we go. You see, I have some pre-calculated numbers here, and I'm going to show you how those were garnered. So a lot of you should already know how those numbers have been calculated, but let's do it in Excel just to see what happens. All right, so again, any cell you can find, doesn't matter where, you're always going to start with that equal sign there, because now you're telling Excel you're going to do a calculation, okay? Now, 10%, so I'm going to do 0.1, because that's 10%, multiply 2, 700. 25,000. And then you see how I got the 72,500. Okay. Now the amount of the mortgage. So after I subtract the down payment from the value of the home, I should get this. If I do it in Excel, again, I'm going to take the 725,000. I'm going to subtract my down payment from it. So again, I'm kind of lazy. So I'm just going to click that cell of that 72,500. And if I hit enter, that's how I got that number. Okay, so in Excel, you can see how you can do these really easily. All right, now, how does one get that monthly payment? How was that done? How was that done? Well, again, by hand, this is what was that. This is what came out. So in Excel, I should get the same thing. Financial. You want to click that financial tab? Go down to this time. Payment. Yes, payment. Let's click that. Now, you remember that rate? 
of 6.35%. Well, we're going to type that in. All right, and we're gonna divide this by 12. Why? Because anytime it comes to your loans, be it a credit card or house payment or a car payment, and remember your credit card is an open-ended loan, because you are paying on these things each month, they're compounding it monthly. So they're gonna compound whatever the interest rate is monthly if you're paying on it on a certain time. So if you notice, the ones where you're paying like either quarterly or semi-annually or whatever, it's always gonna be compounded by the number of times you are paying either into or whatever, all right? So that's the reason why in this case it is divided by 12. So this number is assumed. Since it is a monthly payment, it's always gonna be assumed to be 12, all right? And you see after your interest rate is divided by 12, that's what goes on, okay? So you're gonna have that. Payment periods. So again, NPER is the total number of payments for the loan. So you're paying whatever the monthly is 12 times a year for 27 years through 24. They are. So you're gonna be paying off on this thing 324 times. That's what's going on. And you see what your present value is. It's not the 725 because again, think about it. You paid your down payment into this. So we dropped it down to 652 and look and see what you got. Look and see what you got there. So here is your monthly payment of what was done by hand, 42.15, 22. Here's Excel, same number. And of course it's in the red because that's what you're paying. That is what you're paying. And you can see that is the, basically the same payment as was done by hand. Again, in Excel, you go to financial and you go into payment. That's how that was done. All right, here, last but not least, the duration. How does one actually find the time of an accruing investment here? So in this case, you just have, well, really in a savings account, not really an investment, but in a savings account. All right, so in, let's say if you did have a savings account, you put in a, a principal of 8207, and after a while, it turns out to be 10,974.51 at this rate of 2.92% uh, and was compounded three times a year. Now, when it's all said and done, they're saying that it should take 10 years if done by hand. So this is where your log function comes in. If you noticed a lot of the functions, and I'll show this in another video, uh, a lot of your functions or your uh, equations are exponential functions. So to actually kind of solve them in reverse, you're going to use the log function. In this case, the log function was used to find the time, in this case, 10 years. How does one find this in Excel? Well, again, back to financial. This time, it's not going to be duration. That's actually a different one. We're going to go to P duration. All right, now in this case, it says returns the number of periods required by an investment to each a specified value. All right, so let's check this out. P duration. All you need is three simple things, just three simple things. Well, how does one do that? Well, we have a rate, okay, which is that 292, right? And remember, we have to divide it by the number of times it has been compounded, which was three times. The present value, you had it at 8207. And the future value, you had it at this value. Okay. Now, let's see what this is. So it says 30. It says 30, but wait a minute. It said it gives you the number of periods, if you recall. So if I go back to P duration, it says the number of periods all right, required by an investment to reach a specified value. So this is the number of periods. So this is N times T. So you remember what your N is? So let's find out what our T is. So in order to find out what our T is, we're just going to divide that 30 by 3. And of course, when you round it up, you're going to get 10. So there you are, 
right there. And there you have it. You have your duration. All right, going back to your compound interest, your annuity, your monthly payments, and all this other stuff. But I'm actually going to show you another one, which I really shouldn't do. But while I'm in the topic of it, I'm going to show you this anyway. Have you ever wondered, like, how long it actually take you to pay off a bill? Hmm. How can you do that in Excel? Well, notice this one. Let's go back to this one. Because we actually already know the time, the, you know, the down payments and all this other stuff, right? So let's assume we didn't know this. We now know what you're paying each month. We know the rate. And we know what you're paying, uh, paying down, which is the 652 in this case. So we're just going to go straight to the chase. So what if, what if, and I'm going to actually copy this. All right, so I'm going to copy it. So how does one actually know how to find out how long it actually takes to pay off a bill? Well, in some cases, credit cards, in some cases, mortgages. Well, you get the point. So here's how you can actually do this. Back to financial. see this right here number of periods it says returns the number of periods for an investment investment based on periodic constant payments and a constant interest rate check this out constant payments okay how does this work well let's put in the values that we see we have that 6.35 percent again compounded 12 times does basically 12 times a year your payments in this case we know it to be and I'm gonna put it negative since you're paying this in is 42 one five 22 and you can click this in you know click it from the cells matter of fact let's do that so that we can see it works so just click that in there and you see that it gives you that all right now what is what is the present value here what is the present value? So the present value is this. Okay. The present value is that 652500. Okay. Now look at what it gave you. It gave you the periods of 324. This is the number of periods, right? So you're paying this again 324 times like you saw in the other one. All right, when we was actually figuring out the monthly payment. So now check this out. Take that, take this number, all right, since we know what N is, which is 12, you take this number of 324 divided by 12, and look at what you get, 27 years. So now you know how to find the time when it comes to paying off a loan or a car payment or mortgage or whatever. That's how you can do this in Excel. All right, so hopefully this helps out. It gives you some enlightenment. Again, there'll be other videos on referencing some of these formulas so you can see where this comes from. All right, but there you have it. Practice, 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 study, study, study. Until next time.